last year that was gen ai was just coming on the scene chat mm-hmm. gpt was the thing people was trying to experiment so the topic of this year's reinvention in the year of gen ai what we found is the reinventors are still a pretty exclusive group 9% although we see a big increase in companies with over 50 billion in revenue so these big giants that have money to invest in their digital core are really putting the foot on the gas now these reinventors are pulling away from the pack the other companies what we call the transformers are working on transformation but they've lost ground now the other thing that we found is that there are a group of companies that are applying gen ai more broadly and with more intensity and that is the one group that is catching up so gen ai is proving to be and we see it in our everyday work 700 projects is the technology that is really going to be fundamental to reinvention going mm-hmm. forward okay so give us an example so for the the average person out there listening to this how do you wrap your head around what ex- why can gen ai applied to a life sciences company make such a step change truly reinvent the way they work okay let me quickly step back so we see fantastic innovation on the science and uh, clinical side in life sciences. But the way um, innovation is being delivered is pretty much the same as the last 100 years. And that has led to um, the fact that less than 10% of molecules ever hit the market. It takes a decade. It costs two and a half to three and a half billion. Now, applying, and and that's just not a sustainable situation Mm -hmm. because innovation output has really stalled. Now, using Gen AI, we do see that new targets are being uncovered, even targets that we found undruggable before. We are developing drug molecules in a matter of hours and days using generative AI versus months. We redesigned clinical trials to be more effective with these patient groups. We actually use digital twins to model the supply chain manufacturing impact for all of these many new modalities. And then lastly, on the commercial side, I would say we hyper-personalize the interaction between pharma companies and patients, but also healthcare professionals. And that really leads to stickiness and to faster turnaround. So these are just a few examples of why all of these things help to fundamentally change the way the business is being done.